Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lamuel Weber, and today we have the extraordinary privilege of being with Mark Pazio uh, among his many accomplish accomplishments and activities. Uh, Mark is among the founders of the Free Your Mind Conference and Movement, uh, which is in the downtown Philadelphia historic area by Independence Hall and all these beautiful Quaker um, monuments uh, associated with the founding of, of the U.S. and uh, the exposing of, of uh, the early U.S. as a as as an assembly of mound builders, if I could use that that term, and is responsible for having taught a new generation of American, including years truly, the hidden history of the U.S. And so today being uh, Wednesday, November 9th, 2016, we're very privileged to have Mark here today to offer his reflections on the um, extraordinary election of Donald J. Trump to the presidency. Welcome, Mark. Alfred, thanks so much for inviting me back onto the show. It's a pleasure to be here today. In that larger context of uh, uh, the vision that the Free Your Mind Conference brings and the unearthing of all of the hidden uh, um, <clears throat> facets and factors of, 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 of the U.S. I mean, going back to the Watchers and the Giants and going forward to the Mound Builders who are the Founding Fathers and uh, all of that. Could you sort of walk us through what you see as uh, the kind of arrival of Donald J. Trump at the presidency and what uh, this electoral victory of his represents or could augur in your mind, both positive and negative, both breakdown and breakthrough, I mean, all aspects of it. Sure. Well, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I really didn't see this one coming. Um, I certainly thought that they were putting Hillary in there. Uh, I think what may have changed uh, the decision to um, uh, steal the election if required um, is her health situation. I think they realized that her health is in such bad shape that she might not uh, last through any significant amount of uh, even a first term in the presidency. Um, and again, uh, it's the idea that the, the idea that has to be understood is that wh whoever's in this position is simply a figurehead slash puppet. Um, it really isn't going to make that large of a difference as far as the end goal of what our lives are like. Um, that being said, I don't think that Trump is uh, as much of a globalist insider as is Clinton. Um, so it should be interesting to see uh, you know, as his um, presidency unfolds, how much he's going to really attempt to butt heads with the true powers that be uh, behind, you know, behind the scenes. Um, because as we know, whenever that happens with somebody in a high enough level of a position of power or even figurehead power, uh, it usually doesn't end well for them. Um, hence, you know, what happened to John F. Kennedy uh, and, uh, you know, other people who had a significant amount of influence uh, with large numbers of people. Uh, that being said, I think um, Trump is kind of like somebody who uh, has played ball with them in the past, clearly, uh, and he just sees like that um, they're the lower level people are all going to be thrown under the bus, so to speak. I think he's somebody who sort of realized that early on and decided he wasn't going to play ball with their full agenda. Uh, as far as how much he'll be able to actually do in this position, I'm not particularly hopeful. That's why I don't really put any faith or stock in po politics at all personally, uh, as you know, many of the much of the listening audience will uh, know already, um, I am an anarchist and don't believe in the legitimacy of any form of government. So, um, you know, I 
am not a supporter of either one of these puppet figures, but, uh, you know, realizing that Hillary Clinton is B Bilderberg Steering Committee, uh, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, uh, you're, you're dealing with an avowed lifetime globalist there. Whereas Trump is just, you know, he's kind of like the newer member of the club and might still have a little bit of uh, conscience not to go along with the agenda of these people. But again, we'll see how that plays out in the future. As they say, time will certainly tell uh, whether this person is in any way as genuine as he claims to be. He's uh, talked quite a big talk, but let's see if he actually does try to implement anything that goes against the, the globalist agenda that they have advanced thus far. It should be pretty interesting to see in the future. Um, as far as putting stock in any politician, uh, I just see that as uh, extreme childlike naivete. And um, if people think that any political figure is going to solve the problems of the, the world long term or quote unquote rescue us or save us, um, they are going to be sorely disappointed. Um, this whole thing is about uh, having to change your own mind, having to change your own uh, consciousness, and, and ultimately having to change your own behavior. And uh, I think that's why politics is uh, ultimately so popular is it uh, somehow promises that uh, we can have all these positive uh, external manifestations in the real world without going through that internal process of change in consciousness and ultimately change in personal behavior. And uh, of course, that's not true. That's, uh, of course, a lie. That can't be done. You can't have those external changes without the associated internal changes in consciousness and behavior. And um, uh, Sadly, uh, I want to be fully honest about what I see happening in the world um, as far as this true work that we need to do, this true great work of, of change in ourselves and our, and our own consciousness and our own actions is concerned. Uh, I'd kind of like to, in the light or in the reference frame of this uh, most recent election here in the United States for the presidency, um, give people a take uh, on where my personal viewpoint is and has been over the last uh, you know year or so, um, because um, if I have to be perfectly honest, and uh, I want to, I want to um, caveat this with uh, that I want to say what I feel like I have to say regarding this, um, and be perfectly honest. Yet I don't want to be completely berating either. I want to try to temper this because it's not what I have to say is not really good. Um, I don't really see the awakening that many other people see. I, uh, I mean, and I've considered that perhaps it's the area that I live in, which is a very, very low consciousness area in the United States, which I'll get to in a moment because it actually plays into what we you, you opened up the whole interview with uh, the the place where I'm at is the place where this country was founded. It's Philadelphia. I'm within walking distance of where I live uh, of, uh, you know, uh, old city Philadelphia, which is where the Declaration of Independence was, was signed and uh, where the founding fathers actually meant to be, begin this country. So, um, uh, but to go back to my personal take on where things are, are at with humanity, um, I think that people are as lost as they have ever been. I think that, and I think it's getting worse, not better. I think that all the new forms of media have actually even further confused people instead of waking them up. I think that people have their head up their rear end, so to speak, okay? It is really, really worse than what I, what I have told anybody in the past. I think people are constantly looking outside of themselves. I think people are constantly um, acting in a very childish and naive way when it comes to the understanding of the illegitimacy of government. They think it's all legitimate. They think it's all just fine. They think life is fine. Life is comfortable. Um, a lot of people don't see the problem. Many people, when you tell them that slavery is taking place and that you are actually a slave and that you don't really own any property that you think you own, um, are confused, go glassy-eyed, don't understand what you're saying to them, actually believe that they're free, actually believe that they're uh, protected and comfortable. And uh, I think part of the problem is that they are too comfortable. I think part of the problem is they um, don't really see 
the absolute evil all around them. They don't see the, the psychopaths that are in the halls of power. They don't see um, all of the uh, degradation of human rights and freedom that's taking place all around them. They don't see that they're ruled by criminals. And they don't care. They don't care that criminals have the reins of power. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, all of this stuff that just recently came out about how uh, Clinton's campaign manager was involved in dark occult rituals and uh, how her, um, you know, uh, friends and confidants are connected to pedophile rings. You know, um, this is going on daily, every day. Children are being taken, abused, raped, and murdered by people in positions of power. This goes back all the way back decades, decades before the Franklin cover-up, which people should read about by former Nebraska Senator John DeCamp. You know, I mean, the, the understanding of the pedophile rings that were operating in, in, in Oklahoma and in Nebraska, I mean, it's just, and this was, this was nationwide. These people, these people were trafficking these children nationwide. And you try to explain this to people who even think that they are a little bit conscious and a little bit progressive or a little bit on the libertarian bent. And they don't understand it at all. They don't want to look into it at all. They don't want to hear the word occult. They don't want to hear the word pedophile. You know, they, they are walking around. People are walking around in the modern day completely blindfolded, 100% ignoring. I shouldn't say 100%, but the vast overwhelming majority, over 99% of people are absolutely ignoring deliberately the heinous crimes and heinous dark occult involvement, the sick, depraved religion of these people in positions of power. And it's not some of them, Alfred. It's, it's, it's a great deal of these people all have connections to these organizations and groups. These people are vetted by these organizations and groups, which is why I have to say, you know, I think a last minute decision was made not to put Hillary in there and not to contest any of the election results. I mean, you, you, you didn't hear one peep out of the Hillary campaign side regarding this, this victory. And it wasn't any kind of a landslide. Some, some states had margins of, of votes that were less than a thousand or a couple thousand votes. So, and that's even if you believe or acknowledge that, you know, they're really counting these votes uh, in any way that matters. Um, so, uh, I, I just think that people are completely blind to what really goes on behind the scenes. They think that these people are just elected, have their interest in mind, and then go and really genuinely try to um, do what's best for the vast majority of, of the people. And I mean, if people still think that in the modern world, they're 100% asleep. They have no idea what's really going on behind uh, the, the scenes in the realms of power in this world. They, they, they don't want to understand because a deep understanding of the absolute evil that we are ensconced in will place firmly upon the shoulders of anyone who does understand it a moral obligation and personal responsibility to act in a way as such that you are doing something about it, to try to raise awareness of it to other people who are still asleep, or to actually take action, physical, real-world action, to make these people stop what they are doing, stop all the abusive rights that they are conducting, stop all the theft that they are doing, stop all the violence that they are doing to people, you know, and when you look at it, it ultimately all comes down to the people who will help and protect and serve this ruling class of people. And this goes back to my work on order followers. You know, it's not the few politicians and bankers and people in occult organizations that are ultimately doing the work to oppress other people. It is the people who follow their orders and conduct absolutely violent behavior against people if they refuse to comply with the dictates of these quote-unquote masters or owners of other people. And they look at them as having total legitimacy, and they say, I'm not going to think for myself. I'm not going to exercise my conscience. I'm not going to decide for myself the difference between right and wrong behavior. I'm just going to listen to what somebody else tells me and then carry out that behavior because that's easier than thinking. And I think it's a testimony to how asleep the world really is 
and how much they do, still don't get it. Um, when I personally type in the term order followers into a search engine, and I'm horrified, horrified by the results, because my name is about the only name that comes back regarding anybody talking about the dangers of order followers and them following the orders of their globalist masters. And that's horrifying to me. I would want to be one in a million people who are talking about that dynamic in the world. It, that's what would make me happy. If I had to hunt for my name for hours, if I typed in the term order followers into a search engine, if I couldn't find my name because there were so many people talking about it that I had to hunt for my name for hours instead of it being the top search result that comes up when you type in that, that phrase. That is a disgusting dynamic to me. And it's proof that exactly what I'm saying is true, that people still don't understand the importance of uh, the uh, illegitimacy of following orders, the illegitimacy of government. And I would really like to start reaching out more to the so-called um, libertarian community, you know, because I think these are amongst the most, most asleep people in the world, to be honest. I think the whole so-called freedom movement has some of the most deeply asleep people, sadly. And here's the reason. Unless you understand the occult world, you are not awake. Uh, I, I just want to reiterate that again and, exp and, try, and try to explain that to people very concisely and clearly. Unless you understand the world of the occult, the workings of the occult, the knowledge that the occult world is hiding from humanity deliberately, you are not awake. Unless you hold the knowledge of the occult, you are not awake. Unless you have actually studied it, gone into it, integrated it into your mind, into your consciousness, you're not awake. You are not a conscious human being. Because ultimately what the occultists, the dark occultists who are ruling this world, who currently are the powers that be in this world, what they have known regarding occult knowledge, what they're, the occult knowledge that they're trying to keep back from the people of the earth, what it ultimately contains is the objective knowledge of the difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. It is objective moral knowledge. And what they are doing is saying, we know what right is. We know what wrong is. And we are willfully trying to insulate ourselves from the consequences of choosing evil over good by getting order followers to do our dirty work for us. And therefore, they see it as the brunt of the karmic debt and karmic consequences that they would receive from having to get their hands dirty and do this vile violence unto people themselves. They're getting other idiots to do that work for them. Follow their orders, do that dirty work for them, and therefore they'll take the karmic consequence of the wrong behaviors being chosen and enacted unto others. And that is what the dark occult has ultimately done. They have turned natural law upside down on its head by getting people to follow their dictates and follow their orders and do the behaviors that they don't have the guts to do because some of these people are such weaklings that they couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. And at the first sign of any kind of physical reprisal, they would wet their pants. And, you know, this is part of the problem is that other people in their absolute ignorance are still willing to listen to what these people tell them to do. And I see absolutely zero sign of that changing. I see zero sign of people uh, quitting their jobs in those capacities in the, in the police and military and in government in general. I see absolutely no change in the um, viewpoint, in the world view of people regarding order followers. I don't see people that think that order following is an absolute uh, degradation of the human soul. I think people, I see people who just think it's, it's perfectly fine to take these positions in the world to take these jobs. And I don't see any, any um, uh, sign or um, proof that this dynamic is changing whatsoever. I see a very 
insignificantly tiny pocket of people in the world who are even looking at this data, who are even looking at this information, who are not ignoring it. And what they generally do is take in the information and do nothing with it and just, you know, say, oh, now I know. And, and they think that that's all that they need to do. And I don't see the truth community deeply growing in any way that is, is of any significance whatsoever because I, I see a lot of dross coming into the whole truth community, to be honest. I see a lot of content that is, quite frankly, garbage. I don't see anybody touching on the main points of objective morality. I don't see anybody touching on the main points of understanding what knowledge the occult holds and hides. I don't see many people talking about the absolute illegitimacy of a ruling class, hence the illegitimacy of government. I don't see anybody talking about the absolute illegitimacy and immorality of following somebody else's orders and not using your own knowledge of the difference between right and wrong, which is what conscience is. I see no evidence that the world is changing in that direction. And uh, it's, it's extraordinarily depressing it, to, to, to know how the, the extent that I have given up my, what I have ever wanted to do with my life, to do the work that I have done to bring these topics to, the, 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 to bear in people's minds, and to realize that it has had almost an absolute negligible effect. I'm not saying it hasn't changed some people for the better. I'm not saying that what I've done has been completely worthless. I'm, I'm just saying, as far as that ball being picked up and ran with, I don't see any evidence of it. I see that I'm an isolated, tiny little pocket, uh, an, an anomaly in the matrix talking about these things. And I, do, I just don't see people acknowledging it to the point where they are running with that information and teaching it to others, and then that having a wider impact in our society. I don't see evidence of it at all. That's where, where I think the world is at right now. I think we are as asleep as we have ever been. I think we are more than ever looking for a savior and looking for external uh, solutions to problems which ha are firmly rooted in the way people think. The problem is firmly rooted in the mind, and I do not see any evidence that people's mindset is changing in, in numbers that are large enough to have any impact in our society to change it. I see people who are 100% ignorant, 100% asleep, 100% unconscious, unconscious, having more and more children and teaching their children the same absolute drivel that they believe in and thinking that they're doing a good thing. You know, all, all of these people who think that they're doing such a good thing by joining organizations, uh, you know, I, I mean, people involved in promoting politics and, and violence through government is at an all-time high. I mean, my doorbell has not stopped ringing nonstop by people from political organizations coming to people's homes to try to persuade them to get involved in the process of voting for a master. I mean, and they think they're doing something good, and they have looked into nothing. If you talk to these people, they know nothing about anything. They don't know about geoengineering. They don't know about genetically modified food. They don't know about the dangers of pharmaceuticals. They don't know about the dangers of the medi established medical system. They know nothing about fractional reserve banking. They don't know anything about the Federal Reserve System. They know absolutely zero about the occult, and if you say the word, they run away. They have absolutely no idea about the illegitimacy and violence that's inherent in government. They have absolutely no idea about objective morality and the difference between right and wrong. They're all moral relativists, and they love it. They love it. They love voting for masters. They love not knowing the difference between right and wrong. They love thinking that uh, everything is just uh, uh, arbitrarily up to us to decide what right is and wrong is. They have no moral or logical contradiction that there could be a law in one place that allows a behavior and in another place it forbids the behavior and, it, and that behavior is punishable. And they, they could say both of those things can exist simultaneously and I see no contradiction in that, you know, that, because they're moral relativists. They actually believe morality is relative, and there is no objective difference between right and wrong behavior. 
And as such, they will never act upon conscience. They will only ever act upon emotional um, uh, um, uh, so swaying in one direction or another, uh, emotional outbursts, emotional, um, uh, you know, gauging of information that comes their way. That's all they do is they gauge things with their emotions. They don't have logical thought. They don't care about logical thought. They don't care about morals at all. You know, they just think that whatever somebody votes and decides is law is just fine. And that's the law. And that's what we have to live according to. And this is the epitome of Satanism. This is what Satanism is. I've been trying to explain to people for almost a decade of my life what Satanism is. And I see nobody understanding it. Nobody, get, hardly anybody getting it, hardly anybody understanding it, hardly anybody wanting to do anything with that information, wanting to take it to other people. And um, even in the, the so-called libertarian communities, it's amongst the worst. When you try to explain to them that these people are Satanists, they don't want to hear it. When you try to explain to them that Satanists own government, Satanists own the police, Satanists own the military, Satanists are running all of these organizations, they're running the police, they're running all of the hospitals, they're running all of the health organizations, they're running all of the banks, they're running all of the media outlets, they're running all the sports distractions, everything is owned by these people, everything is completely owned and run by them. And when you say that to people, even within the, the so-called freedom community, they'll try to call you a conspiracy theorist. And there's no theory about it in my mind. I was with these people. I worked with these people. For, for almost a decade of my life, I worked with these people. I know their black-heartedness. I know their level of evil. I know their level of psychopathy. I don't think I know. I wasn't told about it. I didn't read about it in books. I was there with them. I know definitively, 100%. It's not a belief system. It's not a theory. You know? So, and I understand, I realize not everybody has had my experiences and not everybody has been in the positions in life that I've been in. I get it. I understand. You know? So some people are going to have to understand that secondhand. But you know what? There's unimaginable resistance to it because these people love their ignorance. They love what the ignorance implies. The ignorance implies, I don't know, so I can't be held responsible to do anything about it. And they want it to stay that way. They're willfully and consciously choosing to remain in that fearful level of ignorance. And guess what? That's the worst place anybody can be. And that's where I see the majority of the human species at. I see them at that place in unconsciousness. And that's one of the worst places that you can possibly be at. And I don't see any evidence that it's changing in any large scale way, not in any way that reflects large numbers, numbers large enough to actually tip the dynamics in our society into a different way. People will insist that the whole thing with Trump is a sign that, oh, people are waking up and, you know, they're, they're ready to do things differently and they're voting a non-politician into office. You know, well, we did the same thing with Ronald Reagan. You know, and what happened as a result? You know, they took a shot at him in his first couple months in office, and then he said, whoa, I know who really runs things, and did, didn't do a damn thing after that. Went perfectly along with all of their agendas right after that. I don't see any evidence that that will change, especially since Trump has, uh, you know, a significant family as well. So, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all a pipe dream that any of this is going to be changed with um, politics, it's all a pipe dream that it will be changed by uh, reforming the monetary system or reforming the political system. This is going to require to change anything in this world as evil as it is and as completely broken as it is, is going to take infinitely more of a colossal personal change in consciousness and a complete revitalization of the human will. The willpower of the individual is what is going to have to be radically shifted to the greater good. To the, I, mean, I mean the greater form of good. I don't mean the ma vast majority of people. I mean true goodness, real goodness, really understanding what good behavior is. Not the nonsense morals that are taught in religion. You know, and all the tolerance that's taught in the New Age movement as well. We shouldn't have the level of tolerance for evil and bad people that we do. This is another big distraction and another huge um, 
uh, disservice to humanity. The, the New Age movement that has taught all kinds of absolutely erroneous spiritual concepts to people is what's allowing this evil to continue to reign unchallenged. You know, the idea that we shouldn't be angry, the idea that we shouldn't want any kind of retribution against these people for the absolute horrific evil that they have done unto children. I mean, when you, uh, I, I highly encourage people, just watch the, 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 the video Conspiracy of Silence. Watch the video Who Took Johnny. Read the book, The Franklin Cover-Up, and you will understand that these are people in the positions of power in this reality, and they are absolute pedophile Satanists. They are raping and murdering small children. Read the new Podesta email link, leaks that came out of WikiLeaks. Okay? Understand they have an entire system of child trafficking set up in this nation. That they have code words that they use in their emails to describe small boys and small girls that they are trafficking amongst each other. John Podesta himself saying... Um, uh, my, 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 my partner is, is out, Re emailing somebody, my partner is not here for the night. I want pizza for an hour. I mean, who even talks like that? Who says you want pizza for an hour? You know, you don't say you want pizza for an hour. You might say you want pizza in an hour. And who, who orders pizza only when their partner is gone? You know, this, the word pizza in the whole pedophile, pedophilia rings has been a known code word for a small girl for decades in the black web and in the, in the black market community, the, the, the criminal black market community. You know, they're talking about um, pasta and, and hot dogs. You know, well, you, you, th you think the, the elite of the world are eating hot dogs and, 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 and pizza? You don't think they're going to the finest dining restaurants in the world with the finest foods and finest uh, wines and stuff like that? Like, y you really think they're sitting at home emailing each other about whether they're going to have hot dogs or pizza for dinner? I mean, you got to be an absolute mental midget. You have to be the biggest moron on earth if you think they're not talking about the trafficking of children. You know? What do you think he's going to have for an hour? It's not going to be pizza, okay? And you, know, you look at all the other uh, leaked documents that came out about how they blackmail uh, uh, people up to the level of presidency, as in Nixon. All these new documents on Nixon being involved in pedophilia have just recently come out. Involved with the former Australian Prime Minister who brought young girls to service, rich service, Richard Nixon on his plane, on his private plane in Australia. The, the girl drew vivid images of being led up to the runway to the plane, going up the stairs of the plane, onto the plane, Richard Nixon being on the plane, and then being forced to per, uh, perform sexual acts with Richard Nixon, a 10-year-old girl. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's hideous that this is, has gone on for over a century and is continuing to go on today. There's no change in any of this. This is continuing as rampantly as it ever went on. And, you know, everybody's just trying to make excuses. They say, oh, no, this isn't evidence of pedophilia. Nonsense. You know, it's, it's not even a, somebody being a naive child about it or being fearful about it. They like it the way that it is. I, I'm, I'm the person who's going to say, these people are as black-hearted evil who ignore this as the people who are doing the crime. I mean, just think about it. What, it. Arguably, is it not just as bad for somebody to sit there and watch somebody do a heinous crime? If you have the ability to do something about it to stop it, as the person who's conducting the violent behavior. It's practically just as bad. Some people will say it's not quite as bad. You're not the one actually doing it. You're the one allowing it to continue. That's what's going on here. That's what's going on in America. People completely allowing this absolute hideous behavior to be enacted upon small children. 
And they're not, they're not trying to go to these people and storm their homes and take them out and, do, and con conduct justice upon them. They're not trying to get them arrested and thrown into a pr prison cell. No. They're making excuses for them and saying, oh, you don't really have proof of that. No. You can't extrapolate what they're talking about. When that's a known code word, when these same words they're using, they didn't even bother to change them, are known code words in the black market community for child trafficking. Because that's what they are. They're child traffickers. They're drug traffickers. That's what they do. They keep pumping all these drugs into society. They're the ones bringing in all, all these substances in, into the inner cities. You know, they're pumping in all of these to keep people docile, to keep them docile. They don't want people as awake as somebody like me. They don't want people as ready to take action as somebody like me. No. They want you docile. They want you accepting, accepting. Now, this is just the way it's always been. This is just the way it's going to continue to be. Just accept it. Forgive, accept, forgive, accept. Yeah, and that'll keep going on, and these people will rule you unchallenged. To a, and they're going to get it to a point where they're going to have you on a cattle car, taking you to an execution camp. And just like the Jews in uh, Germany during the World War II period, you're going to be saying, they're just doing what's right for us, and they're just relocating us temporarily. In concentration work camps, in work camps where Jews were being worked to death in Nazi Germany, there is evidence that they were saying to each other, this is all just temporary, they're, all, they're, you know, they're just relocating us. They were telling that to each other while they were in the death camps. That's how asleep those people were, and that's how asleep the people are today, that they'll be in death camps at some future point, and they will be saying, everything is okay. And that's where I see where the world is at. I don't know, I personally don't know what anybody is talking about when they talk about some type of a worldwide awakening. I see no evidence of it whatsoever. I'm not trying to be dark. I'm not trying to be alarmist. I'm not trying to be just depressed and always looking at the negative or the, the, the glass half empty. I'm trying to be as honest as possible about what I personally see in the world on a daily basis. That's all. I, I, you know, I could get a little bit passionate when I talk about these things because it is upsetting. Okay. But I could also just coldly calculatedly say, I see zero evidence of the dynamic changing in any significant way. You could say, yes, yeah, small, tiny, little fraction pockets, these tiny little slivers that may or may not amount to anything, you know, it, at some future point, depending on where these people take this knowledge, how they distribute it. But right now, do I see any appreciable change happening in the world that, that leads me to believe that humanity is going to somehow be fine or somehow is going to win their freedom? No evidence of it whatsoever. I, again, this is part of the reason, it's not the entire reason, when I come back onto the airwaves and doing a podcast and eventually a video cast again, I'm going to explain to people why I've taken such a long hiatus. Uh, I don't know if I'll get into it today, but part of the reason also is uh, that has I, I've slowed down with all of this is um, I'm extraordinarily... Uh, in a very depressed mindset regarding what impact my work has really had, or, or anybody's work telling the truth. Um, I, I don't really see it having that much profound um, positive impact. I see it having impact on a very small scale with individuals, with individuals. Societally, the whole truth-telling community has had negligible impact at all. And that's what I'm really talking about. I shouldn't even use the word my work. I should use the term our work. All of our collective work has amounted to a hill of beans right now. I mean, to be honest, I'm just, I'm just trying to be honest. And I think that can still change. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying we're doomed and there's no hope. Okay. But I, I, right now, I have had to take a seat on the bench for a little while. Because to, to continue to do something that I see as having no movement is draining. It's, it's completely and totally draining. And I'm sort of waiting for some people to pl play catch up. And I'm waiting for other people to take up some of my slack and run with it. Because if I just do it all and I keep putting out this work and nobody else is putting it out, 
in, in any way that's effective. What's the point of one person doing all of that? It's not up to me to do all of that work. That, that this is a shared work. This is not Mark Passio's great work. It's not what it's called. It's called the great work of humanity. You know, we need to be doing this work way in way bigger numbers and the numbers just are not there they're not there and what that's going to lead to is more and more people who are going to look for external solutions or even see external forceful and violent solutions as a stopgap to being able to delay the inevitable slavery of humanity, which is what a revolution is, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? The American Revolution was conducted by the absolute most uh, conscious human beings uh, w w who had all the spiritual knowledge that they needed to, to uh, uh, acquire. It was conducted by a lot of totally um, ignorant people who just saw, if we don't do this, there's nothing else. That's what a revolution is for. That's what a physical, combative, armed revolution is for. It's the people are all saying, we didn't really get to where we needed to get in mind and in heart, so we got to do this with weapons. And that's coming. That's going to come inevitably, invariably, unwaveringly must occur. If the change does not happen in consciousness, the change must occur physically. It won't be the change we need. It will be a change, though, and it will be a bloody horrific change, okay? But it will invariably, unswervingly go to that end result. And then we will get the new opportunity, which is why it's called a revolution, to then do it the right way again. And if it doesn't happen the right way again, we'll do it with blood again and continue to do this cycle over and over and over again. And that's, you know what that is the definition of, folks? That's a little thing called hell, which is where we are. That's where you're at, okay, if you haven't figured it out yet. We're stuck in a hell cycle of doing the same thing over and over again in pure ignorance and insanity which is what insanity is, just doing the same thing, thinking you're going to solve the problem when it never has worked that way. Because people don't want to get the knowledge of the difference between right and wrong. They don't want to get the knowledge of the occult, the hidden knowledge about how the laws of nature and the laws of morality work. Understand that this is what is ultimately being hidden from you by these people who are ruling over you because they are in that level of knowledge and you're in that level of ignorance. And until people open their eyes to what the occult is and understand that this is a tool, that it can be used for good or evil, and that the people who hold the knowledge right now are evil, and they're using this knowledge for their nefarious purposes, keeping people in ignorance of it, nothing is going to change. This is why I, out of all the people I ever encounter in the so-called freedom movement, I would say... If I had to give an estimate, one in maybe every four or 500 have any working knowledge of the occult, if that, and I might be being generous, okay? And we believe somehow that the people in this movement are going to be responsible for some grand change in human life. I mean, the, the people who are following these people are the blind leading the blind. It's the, it's, it's the blind following the blind because they have not hit upon any of the genuine real topics that need to be discussed. And many of them are scared because their own peer group will frown upon them as they frown upon me. I'm telling you, libertarians look at me like I'm a demon. They don't want to hear any of the stuff that I talk about. They don't want to hear it all. They want people blowing smoke up their rear ends, telling them there's going to be a financial solution to the crisis we face. We, the, we're going to vote the right person into office one day from the Libertarian Party. He's going to get in there and make all the changes that are needed to be made. That's what they want to hear. They want, they want somebody amongst their own rank blowing smoke up their rear end. They don't want to hear somebody saying order followers are going to have to quit their jobs because they can't even imagine that happening. When I tell them, you've got to give up the notion of the belief in money. Money's a religion. 
They can't even imagine a society that doesn't have a monetary system. And many of them can't even imagine the, the, uh, a society where authority isn't looked at as, as legitimate and we don't have a government, government or a ruling class anymore. They can't even see that is how devastated their imagination is in the community that is advocating for rights and more rights and more freedom. And they think they're going to get it by these political and financial measures. They're delusional, delusional people. They, they, they don't understand that this is not about changes in politics or finance. This is about a change in consciousness. This is about changing the way you think about reality. And you tell that to people and they're like, whoa, whoa. You stay right there and keep saying that. I'm going to run this way as fast as I can because they don't want to hear it. That, that, that's what's required of your change in your mind and in your heart and in your behavior. No, they don't want to hear that. They want everybody, they want people doing this. It's that, it's that, it's that, it's that. No, it's you. It's you that's the problem. See, that's what it is. You got to stop doing this. You got to stop doing this and you got to start doing this. When people start doing that, that's when I'll admit that there's some change in consciousness taking place on earth. But right now, I'm sorry to say I don't see it. Maybe it's because I live in a communist community. I am in one of the largest communist strongholds on earth right now. That's what Philadelphia is. Philadelphia has been 100% taken by communists. Okay, that this needs to be understand, understood by people not only who happen to have the misfortune of living in the city of Philadelphia, but all of the United States. People who live in the United States really need to understand that, in particular, the, the, the three cities of Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and New York, New York, are 100% communist taken. To a slightly lesser extent, Boston as well. Okay? These cities are taken by communists. Okay? And people still don't know what communism is. You know? They don't understand it. Now, I tell people, have you ever looked at the high holidays of Nazism, communism, and Satanism? Just look up that little dynamic. Find out what the high holiday of Nazism was. The high holiday of communism was and is, and the high holiday of the dark occult community. And you'll discover something quite interesting. Okay? Do it to confirm what I'm about to tell you, but they're all the same. It's the same day of the year. Out of 365 possible choices, you would think that Nazism, communism, and Satanism would somehow have enough room to find a, a different high holiday for the ideologies that they represent. But no, they're all the same. May 1st, Valpurgis Noct, May Day. Okay? Because all of these things are the same. Then there's, there's no difference between them. They want total control. They want enslavement of the human species. They want the de destruction of objective morality. They want the destruction of natural law meaning the laws of morality and the consequences that people receive by choosing either moral behavior or immoral behavior. They, don't, they want to be insulated from that natural law, that moral law, okay? And they want 100% total destruction of the human soul. And they have largely accomplished it already. They've largely accomplished it. Because all I see out in, in the community, when I walk outside my house in this community, it is a collection of brain-dead, soulless zombies who do not care about right or wrong at all. They don't care about the difference between right and wrong. They want somebody else to guide their lives, to run their lives, to give them free stuff, okay? They are totally identified 
See, they identify my team, my sex, my race, my income bracket, my political party. They're totally ego bound and ego identified with what's mine. What it, th this is related to me, my little small little ego. And so I'm going to just do, it doesn't make a difference how criminal this, this, this person is. She's a woman. She's a Democrat. I'm going to vote for her, you know? And other people will say, oh, it doesn't make a difference how criminal or how dastardly or, or horrible mindset this other man is. You know, I'm a man. I'm going to support him. I'm going to support this. It's like, I don't want to support anybody. I want to support what's right. I want to support right over wrong. It's the only factor of consideration that I take into consideration. That's it. It's the only factor I take into consideration. I'm not interested in what's going to make me more money. What's going to make me more popular? What's going to have me have more friends? What's going to have me have more possessions? I don't care. I don't care about any of that stuff. The only thing I care about is, is it right? Is it moral? That's it. The end. And you ask people out on the street. Uh, look, you could ask this to people in the freedom movement, in the libertarian community. What is a right? The vast overwhelming majority of the human population can not tell you the definition of a right. Cannot do it. How do you possibly expect that we are going to be able to preserve any modicum of human rights when people in the overwhelming majority of the population don't know what a right is? And, but, but, but there's a huge awakening happening in humanity, folks. The overwhelming majority of the human population can't speak the words to another person of the definition of a right. And yet, there's a huge, massive shift in consciousness happening. I mean, th this, is, this is how bad it is, you know? And I, again, I wish I could come and give people an update, uh, you know, a, a report to tell them, it's all getting better. We're ma making moves in the right direction. I see it all changing. I would love to do that. I'd love to be able to do it. I'd love to. But I cannot in good conscience. I think in many ways, if I, if I did that, I'd be doing a complete disservice to humanity by, by lying to them to make them feel good about where things are headed. And I see communist think tanks that have taken over the school system. This is why. What is an interesting dynamic to look at when you watch, you know, the uh, television reporting of this election, this recent election? The dynamic I did find interesting, Alfred, was looking at the absolute discrepancy and d disparency between the um, uh, concentrated urban communities and all of the rural communities in the United States, almost invariably in every single state, in the most concentrated urban centers, in all the cities of America, the Democratic Party ruled completely. And this is because their movement is toward total socialism. Their movement is toward socialism, which then acts as a foothold to get communism in installed. Okay? And... This is proof that the, the plan of the European think tanks that recognized that the Bolshevik revolution tried to take power too quickly and did it militar, uh, militaristically um, was a long-term failure. And that's why communism fell and it fell in the Eastern Bloc country. It fell in the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc countries. They re-established this plan shortly after the Bolshevik Revolution, centered in the think tank called the Frankfurt School, which is in Germany. And the Italian communist Antonio Gramsci, who was one of the influential members of the Frankfurt School at that time, uh, came up with the concept of the long march through the institutions. This is something all of your listeners should already be familiar, familiar with if they are not and should research if they are not familiar with it. Antonio Gramsci, The Long March Through the Cultural Institutions, the Frankfurt School of Germany. It's a political think tank. They recognized that it would be far more effective to bring communism into the world, worldwide, 
by doing it through the cultural mechanism instead of a military mechanism. And they recognize that the absolute preferred best way to bring communism into uh, worldwide communities through culture would be to do it through the education system. And in all the urban centers, this plan was instituted in America. They brought people overseas and implemented them as point men in the positions of power, particularly in the education systems, and slowly worked more and more of their people who had their mindset into the university system in America. That's why what's happening, and anybody who understands this dynamic is, is true, what I'm saying, can see that what's happening in America is in all the urban communities, the children are being massively brainwashed, particularly in colleges and universities, to come out of that system. This is what, why they called it in the Soviet Union the outcome-based education system. It's not education at all. It's indoctrination to ensure that anybody who goes through that gauntlet or that ringer is going to come out outcome the way they want them to, thinking the way they want them to think. And this is what's happened in America. And this is why in all the urban communities in America, they vote heavily socialist to almost radically communist. Okay, That's the political uh, variance and spectrum. It goes from moderately socialist to radically communist. And there's nothing else. That, that's eight, almost 85% of the city of Philadelphia voted Clinton yesterday. Eight and a half out of 10 people. You can't get that kind of universal agreement on what color the sky is, people, okay? I mean, you can't get that kind of agreement on whether water is wet in America. Eight and a half out of 10 people voted Clinton in Philadelphia in the city of Philadelphia, although Trump took the state. And here's why. There's only two big urban centers in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, that's it. The rest of, if you've ever driven through Pennsylvania, it's wide open country practically, okay? I'm telling you, the, all of these urban communities, you know, amounted, that's where all the votes came in from. All, uh, I'm sorry, not urban, all of the, Suburban and rural communities is where all these votes came in from for Trump. And hence, he took the state. And he was the first Republican to take the state of Pennsylvania since uh, George Bush Sr. So, um, I mean, this is what we have to understand. The, the discrepancy between rural and urban communities isn't just because it's a difference in lifestyle. Because some of these people grow up on farms or, you know, have a whole lot of grass and trees around them. They're connected to the same media outlets that we are. They have televisions in their house. They have computers in their house. They have internet. They have movie theaters. You know, they're exposed to all the same stuff. What, what's different is they don't have, at the university or college level, the same schooling system there. Their children aren't being run through the ringer, through the gauntlet of the communist-controlled school system in the urban centers. And it's very, very, very smart what these people did. What these communists did, I have to hand it to them, they had their strategy down. They went to the place where the numbers are. That's what you got to do. They went to all of the highly populated urban centers to implement this plan. And that's why in every urban community, it's moderately socialist to radically communist. And that's how they vote. You know, and instead of saying, instead of all these people saying we're not voting at all, the dynamic that they are voting in, especially in the urban centers, is socialism and communism. Because that's what the Democrat Party has become a represent, representative of. Ultimately, it's all the same thing. It's all going to continue imperialism, warfare. Uh, uh, radical divides between uh, finance, uh, financial classes of people, um, continuing the destruction of rights, continuing the destruction of morality, and ultimately enslaving people. There's no difference between radical right-wing politics and radical left-wing politics. The only difference is in the way they package it, the way they pitch it to people, and in the way they implement it as far as their logistical strategy goes. 
the end result is always the same. The end goals are always the same. Total control, you know, and yet people still can't see it. I'll attack communists and I'll get called a Nazi. I'll attack Nazis and I'll get called a commie, you know. How about, how about being an American who stands for moral principles and doesn't want any of these two satanic ideologies because that's all they are. One's the left wing of the big, uh, of the big demon called Satan and one's the right wing of the big demon called Satan. That's it. That's all it is. That's all they are. They're Satan's wings. That's all. Left wing and right wing both belong to the same guy. You know, I'm not even saying I believe in a anthropomorphized deity known as Satan. It's a, it's a concept, people. You know, it, it, it's an allegory, okay? You know, understand the metaphor. We're talking about evil and how it rules. And evil does rule. Evil right now in the world is more powerful than good in the world. You know, you want to talk philosophically about which force in and of itself is more powerful. You can make the argument good is more powerful than evil ultimately at, at the highest level of existence. On earth, however, evil is more powerful than good. There's no question about it because more people have taken evil into their mind and heart and accepted it as normal than have taken good into their mind and heart and accepted the fact that they must propagate it to others. You see very few people doing that, talking about objective morality, talking about that order following is not a virtue. I mean, I could count the people doing that in the world on two hands, maybe, okay? And it, it, until that number grows, I mean, exponentially grows. It has to be millions of people doing that. Like I said, when I type in order followers into Google, I don't want to see my name. I don't want to see my name. That's disgusting to me. That is horrifying to me. I went on to, on to a search engine the other day. I said, let me just see who else has presentations or is talking about or has a podcast or anything on order followers. And I type in the term in double quotes, order followers. Mark Passio, Mark Passio, Mark Passio, Mark Passio, Mark Passio, Mark Passio. Page after page after page, nothing but me. That's sickening to me, sickening. And I'll start to say maybe the dynamic is changing a little bit when I see that a dynamic like that changing, but I don't see it changing. Don't say, I see, I stand alone when it comes to talking about that these are the people who are ultimately responsible. Everybody else wants to give them a pass, you know? I mean, I was listening to InfoWars the other day and I thought Alex was doing a great job and his crew was doing a great job trying to expose the occult with these Podesta emails. And in the next breath, they'll say they support the police. You know, order followers. How could you support the police and the military? I think in a way, you know, I haven't really said much about it. That's why somebody like that isn't, well, doesn't want to bring me on his show. Because all I'm going to talk about is the illegitimacy of authority and the illegitimacy of following orders. That's it. That's all he'll get out of me if he does bring me on, which is now has probably doing this interview has probably solidified that that's never going to happen. Whereas I think it could be a very powerful combination because he does expose the occult. And if you want somebody to expose the occult a lot further, you could bring me on that show and I'll do it. But, you know, I'm not going to make any excuses for the people who actually carry out violence against other people. And you know what? That's not these politicians, you know. They're, they're not the ones who are actually taking our rights away from us. The police are. The police are the people who actually implement the taking of rights, not the politicians. The politicians are the ones who come up with the grand scheme to take the rights away from other people. Who actually does that behavior are the police and always have been. And that's why when a totalitarian society takes over, it's called a police state. It's not called a politician state. It isn't called the president's state. It isn't called the governor's state. It isn't called the banker's state. It isn't called the priest's state. It's called the police state because they're the people who are actually implementing the totalitarian violent measures, not the politicians. And people still don't understand that. They still don't get it. They still don't get having that force. They don't even understand the racist origin of the police. And no, this is not a social justice warrior tactic. It's historical fact. Police were originally instituted where slavery, black slavery was once 
a, a common practice. And when black slaves were released from their slavery, they were looked at as practically wild animals in the community by their racist former owners and masters. And they implemented police forces in their communities to protect them from what they looked at as uh, horrific, evil, wild animals roaming the streets now, roaming the community. That's the racist origin of the United States police departments, okay? And people need to look into those origins and understand also in the North, they came out of a conglomeration of gangs that were originally running all kinds of, uh, of, of immoral operations in their communities, but yet came together because they wanted to protect their territory. And they didn't want other gangs making encroachments into their territory. And that's a lot of the origins of, of police in the, in the modern day in, in, in the northern part of the United States, especially in the you know, New, New York, New England area. The, the police in America, the origins of them has nothing to do with any m morality or any desire to keep people safe from a truly moral perspective or reason. It came from wanting to stop former black slaves from doing anything harmful to their former masters and from gangs who wanted to protect their communities from the encroachments of other gangs. That's where police, that's the origin of police in America, folks. And nobody knows this. Nobody talks about this. And you think these people are moral people? You think they actually care about what's right or wrong? See, that's the thing. People who get involved in the whole truth-telling business, they, they look at it like, I have to soften everything. You know, I have to soften my tactic, my approach. You, you, you're going to notice with me, folks, if anything, my approach is getting harder and harder core. It's not going in the other direction. It's not going in the direction of tolerance or compassion to evil. It's going in the direction of becoming more and more extremist against evil. Because good should not be wishy-washy. Good should not be weak and wishy-washy. Good should be infinitely stronger than evil. It should be infinitely more resolved and firm than evil is. And I don't see it. I don't see that. Not in this world. Not, not here on earth slash hell. No, I don't see it. I see people who say they're good saying, let's have tolerance for this. Let's excuse this person's behavior because, oh, he didn't know. She didn't know. Everybody knows ultimately whether they're harming somebody or their, and or their rights or property. To say they don't know is a bullshit excuse, pardon my language. Okay? That's exactly all it is and all it ever has been. I tell people, have you ever been wronged by another person? Do you know what it feels like? Well, then don't do it to other people. And don't give me any nonsense excuse that cops that know they're doing something wrong to other people. Just, they just believe they've been taught it's the right thing to do. Utter nonsense. Sheer nonsense. And that's, what that's called is good, so-called good, being wishy-washy and making excuses for evil. And, and we can that's what the role of religion and the New Age movement is, folks. The role of religion and the role of the New Age movement is to say, let's, let's have all this tolerance for evil. I actually attended a speech by a Buddhist. I, can't, I don't even feel like trying to remember his name because of what nonsense it was. And he said, the highest level of enlightenment is total um, tolerance for the cognitive dissonance of others. Really? That's what Buddhism is. That's news to me. I thought Buddhism was understanding the causal factors of human suffering and then trying to allay it by understanding that there is a better path to walk in life than all those factors that caused all the suffering we self-generated. That's what I thought Buddhism was, but I'm sorry, maybe I'm completely incorrect. Maybe Buddhism is looking at somebody else and saying, I know you're an evil bastard, but I have total tolerance for the evil that you commit every day. Sheer nonsense. And this is what the New Age movement wants to propagate. This is what they want to put out there. And this is what religion does every day. You know, and that's the other thing. People want to think that this has nothing to do with religion. 
You know, I, ju I just told somebody the other day, these people have a sick, depraved religion. So I, I don't care. I don't want to know anything about that. I don't believe in that. I, th I mean, imagine that. You don't want to know what the religious foundational belief systems and ideologies of your owners are, of the people who actually believe they legitimately own you. I'm not saying that they do. It's on, uh, all slavery is inherently illegitimate and can never be legitimized. But this is a, here's a person who thinks he's informed saying to me, I'm not interested in knowing about what their belief systems are. And you think you're going to defeat that enemy. You're going to defeat that enemy without knowing a thing about how they think. Good luck. Good luck. And with, with any co confrontation, battle, combat, if you don't know the enemy, the enemy has you beaten already. And that's where we're at. That we think, we think we know what we're fighting. We think we know who we're fighting. We think we know what their beliefs and tactics are. We know nothing about it. And part of that, part of what holds that back is religion. Because religion is owned and controlled by them. And what they want to do is tell you, don't dare ever look into the occult. That's what all religious systems tell you. Don't look into the occult. And there's a reason they tell you that. Because that religion that's telling you not to look into the occult is the occult. That's them. That's owned and controlled by them, by your owners, by your masters. They don't want you understanding their strategies and mindsets. They want you ignorant of those strategies and mindsets. So they're telling you constantly through religion that you think is so good don't look into the mindset and ideology and plans of your masters and owners. Why would they tell you not to look into it? Not because it's evil. No, because they don't want you to grasp the chess strategy that's being used against you. They want the chess master to have all those strategies to himself. And so you sit down at the board and you get your ass destroyed. Handed to you on a platter. Here you go. That's what they want. They want it to be a no contest because the people are in total ignorance and the masters are in total knowledge. And that's what every religion does. Every religion. Because every one of these religions, I don't care whether it's Christianity, Judaism, Taoism, um, Buddhism, um, uh, Islam, they're all designed by these people. They're all designed by these people, all of them. All of the so-called occultic schools, Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, all of it. I'm not telling you, you should know about it all. You should study it all. You should be a generalist and have knowledge about all of these things. But to be a joiner is a different thing. To be a joiner is to give have that ego identification and say, I'm going to give my identity to this group. That's what the police do. That's what the politicians do. That's what people who work in government, who work in medicine, who work in law do. That's what people who join sports teams do. That's what people who join these secret societies do. They're not, they're not, they don't care about your rights and your individuality. They care about the preservation of the unit, which is a collective, which is the difference between collectivism and true individuality and individual rights and sovereignty. Even the free man on the land so-called movement does this. Oh, we have knowledge that other people don't. It's like a little secret society click. Oh, we're we're going to get our masters to leave us alone and not beat us anymore. And we'll do this through political tricks in their system that they designed, that our masters designed. Yeah, and that's freedom. They're a joke and always have been. And it's another group I've let off the hook way too easily. Another ego-bound, ego-identified groupthink organization, wherever they happen to be. Because it's saying, I'm going to work within the existing evil system to have the evil leave me alone for a little while. And you think you're free. And, you're, and by doing all of that paperwork, you're giving legitimacy to that system. They're criminal thugs. They never had any legitimacy. It was never been legitimate ever for one second. Ever. I'm sovereign now with no paperwork. 
And the 45 on my hip will protect my sovereignty when someone tries to take it. And my mind will protect it before my hand ever touches that 45. You know, that's sovereignty. I'm not cooperating no matter what you do to my body. That's freedom. I'm not afraid to die now. I've done what I came here to do. My soul's prepared and ready. I spoke out against the evils of this world. I ta told people what the difference between right and wrong behavior is and how they need to get their mind out of the trash that it's stuck in. The total erroneous belief systems that do nothing but cause division and suffering. Do I've done it. I'm ready to go at any time, any second, folks. Okay? How many people can say the same? Not many. Not many. So, you know, people within these communities will say, oh, this isn't about religion. This is entirely about religion, folks. People in the so-called uh, uh, political uh, communities, the free man on the land community, the, the um, uh, so-called freedom movement, okay, libertarians, you try to explain to them, this isn't a political ideology. This isn't a political agenda. It's not a financial agenda. This is a religious agenda. What constitutes the rulers of the world is a religious priest class. They invented all the ostensible religions to insulate people from their religion. To tell them, don't ever look into this sick, depraved thing called the dark occult. No, you, you want to remain ignorant of that. Oh, you'll be so pure because you will, you'll have no working operation of how your owners think. Well, but you'll be pure. Ignorance is never pure or good, people. The creator of the universe wants us to be free. Only knowledge is going to be the path to that freedom. And people always want to bring up, you don't talk about Jesus as the Savior. No, I don't. I don't talk about anybody as a Savior. I don't believe in saviors. I believe that work is what is going to save people. Hard work to change consciousness. Effort is going to save people. Care is going to save people. Willpower is going to save people. You develop intelligence, care, and will. Let me tell you something, folks. That's God. That's the trinity that is God. Okay? That's what will save you. Not belief in anything. Belief, two dimes and a nickel will get you 25 cents. That's what belief will get you. And yet, there's radical believers all over the place. This is what my whole presentation at the next Free Your Mind conference is going to be. It's called Fake Ass Christians. I'm just going to absolutely lay into the so-called Christian community because you are nothing of the kind at all. You're no Christian. You're Christians in name only. You, don't, you haven't even deeply looked into what the work of Christ was, who stood against the political establishment of his day, the financial establishment of his day, and the religious establishments of his day. That's what Christ, the allegory of Christ biblically is all about. And people still can't see it, and they still can't see Christ was killed by the police in the allegory. I, t I tell Christians, you know, Jesus was murdered by the police. And they're like, what? Like, I just told them some big shocking revelation. The Roman centurions of the day were the police of their day. They were the poli acted as the police and military the of the control system of their day. And they were the ones who actually, in the allegorical story, crucified Jesus. How can Christians see that? Why? Every time I tell that to a Christian, the police... Jesus to death. Do I get a look like I'm the devil? I, like I'm evil for telling, saying that when that's exactly what the case is. And then these people call themselves Christians. Say, J Jesus didn't believe in government. He fought against the Roman government. He didn't believe in money. He fought against the mo money changers, the modern bankers. He didn't believe in religion. He fought against the Pharisees and, uh, and Sadducees. The established religious uh, sects of his day. 
And again, I don't care whether you believe in Jesus as a physical person or as an allegorical story. It's, it, it's irrelevant. It's the lesson contained in the story that matters. People who think they're so religious, you know, have this erroneous notion of morality. Don't really know what the difference between right and wrong behavior is at all. Think they do, and, and they have no idea. They're moral relativists. They believe in the law of man. They say they serve the master, which is the God of creation, and yet they say man can implement his laws on earth. And they can be different everywhere, depending on where you're at or what time, you know, you know what, what time period you're living in. And, and laws can be all different. Yeah. And then they claim that they're Christians and that they serve God. And they serve his laws. I mean, fake isn't even a good enough word for it. You know, I, I, I almost need to come up with something more abrasive and more vitriolic to describe it. They're, they're a total laughing joke if they think they are serving, quote unquote, God. The only God they're serving is, again, that evil force that ultimately created this whole system of control by continuing to believe in it and accept it. That's the God they serve. So most Christians are worshiping Satan and are Satanists without even understanding what Satanism is or knowing that this is the ideology they even subscribe to, you know? So, I mean, that, that's really my assessment, Alfred. I mean, I, I, I welcome any other questions that, that you want to get into or any other topics. If you want to go off on a completely different direction or tangent, that's fine. But I just wanted to get that rant out of my system to um, just say, this is where I think things are, folks. I think they're, I th arguably believe that they are worse than when I started talking. When I started speaking, I think things were better. I think people were a little bit more open-minded and conscious uh, around when I first started speaking back in 2007 publicly. Now, they're, they've tightened the mind control screws way down. And they have, especially the young, people in their 20s are brain dead. Brain dead. They have tightened the screws. They realize, whoa, our formula went off somewhere along the line, and we got to get it back on track. These think tanks did their homework on people, and they are using all the social media, and they are using the, the new you know, technology to absolutely do a, a, a number, a bombardment upon people's psyche, and they're getting it done. They are just, I mean, in, in, a, in a way, I have to have respect for my enemy, and I have to say, they're getting it done. They are, it's brilliant. But what they're doing is, is absolutely magic. It's, I would not think, I would not 10 years ago have thought possible that they could degrade and dumb down a population to the extent that they have. I would not have believed that it was this possible. I, I, I have respect as, their, as an enemy for them. I don't have respect for, as a human being for them, but as strategists and the enemy in this great spiritual war, they have my profound respect. Right. That, that is really very, uh, the, the vision that, that you put forward, I can see it has integrity. It's, it's it's very very forceful and from from my end uh i can offer a lot of validation for it uh i've spoken of that of the phenomenon of which you speak in 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 different terms that is looking at a different slice of it uh from what i call the densities the third density third, third density time space density and then fourth, fifth densities, and uh, uh, how artificial intelligence, uh, which is in league with Luciferianism, Satanism, and the manipulative ETs and the uh, dark forces and the matrix, have essentially co-opted third density and taken it over on an accelerating way Right. And now uh, this is this brings in a concept that is called in various terms. Uh, I call it uh, you, you 
you, you can find it in all sorts of literature as density ascension, where uh, in uh, between the yugas or the ages, let's say the great years are 25,800 years long, 25,920 years long. That's the same thing as the yugas. That's the same thing as the Mayan calendrics. They're all the same basic cycle. And we're now toward the end of the Kali Yuga, which is a Yuga that's 25,800 years long, and it's coming toward its end, some people say 2025. And it's three part sin and one part virtue, and, it's, and that's why it's just total chaos, because it's winding down to nothing. And we've had three successive Yugas. This is just the Yuga system which is, you know, it's classic. And you have one yuga, second yuga, third yuga of each one, 25,000 years. The Kali Yuga, they each devolve down to each other, and the Kali Yuga is a final devolution. Right. And then third density kind of implodes, and the whole system turns over, and we go into the Sacha Yuga, which is the Golden Age. So that's the light at the end of the tunnel. That's the good news that it's, it's beyond us because in the universe, we're about to, we're now entering a, a zone of very high density particles, high frequency particles. And supposedly, uh, there's an interdimensional portal and there's a planetary ascension that, that happens at this point, or at least there's more and there's history of it. And uh, uh, so I just want to offer to you that that's conclusion. I came to the exact same conclusion, but with a different language, looking at artificial intelligence as having taken this over. And, you know, so AI and trained people are brain dead because the AI, because the AI is right. Over. Right. And, and that now we're about to, go over into fourth, fifth density, and then those souls, and the third density implodes, and then those souls that do not, are not capable of, of going into the higher frequencies go off into other uh, cycles in other parts of the universe, because the universe essentially being a machine for uh, uh, developing souls. Right. Um, so I can completely support what you're saying. So you and I have been tracking each other, but with a, a, a different, uh, different language. And, uh, I completely understand and down to the use of the John Podesta, I was completely, I was completely disgusted by oh, yeah. now that they use terms like parakeets, parakeets are little boys, I think, you know, all that. Where, where you were talking about pizzas and parakeets, pasta, hot dogs. It's just too much. And uh, I think, I mean, you know, people have to understand that uh, uh, Donald Trump wasn't on S. Epstein's island, that all these people were together. You know, I mean, sure. the, the Trumps and the Clintons live a few blocks from each other in New York. Yeah. I mean, it's just city blocks. And last night, their their headquarters were just like a couple of blocks away. I mean, you know, I mean, how much more graphic can it be? Right. It's just exactly. Too, too, but, I mean, it's a pedophile culture. And there's a a, a, a young underage woman who's who's trying to, been trying to sue Trump because apparently, according to the and and this has been published and it is links and I published it on my Facebook. So there are actual photographs and I've seen registers of Donald Trump on the Lolita Express on Epstein's plane and all of that. And what he got off on was that they were bringing young girls and he just loves to rape them violently. And so there's a, there's a lawsuit, you know, with all this power, POTUS, President of the United States, they just, the girl fears for her life and, and 
that the trial's not now scheduled for next month, the, the December. But you know how how power can just like deep six these things and make them go away. Sure. But uh, it, you know, it's just that uh, you know, and Ivanka Trump, his daughter, is Miss Mason. She is Miss wow. Mason. She is Miss Mason. She is Miss Mason. I mean, like, Diane, and, you know, all of that that just doesn't register on people. Uh, so they're all a bunch of mound builders. You know, Johnny, come, come, come late, Lisa. I, I personally, I, I had some, some anecdotes. Bill Clinton is the, is the illegitimate son of Governor Winthrop Rockefeller. They were at Yale, Yale Law School uh, in the early in the early seventies, and uh, anyway, it's just all this stuff. Thank God that they got blown out, but they're still out there doing this thing, and, and, you know. And uh, at this stage, we individual humans just have to keep on exposing this, and just it'll be the it'll be the it'll be the spiritual dimension. Right, intelligent community of souls, which together is God, that is God together, and that's what's going to blow out the this the system, which it has. And you know, you can just look at how what happens when you go through the Kali Yuga into the turn over to the Satya Yuga, the whole system just goes kabooey and it just blows out this stuff, blows out all the evil empires of the end of the Kali Yuga. So I'd like to. Uh, I, this is just a reflection that I'm saying that we've gone down similar paths over the last few years. Sure. And I, I can give complete validation to what you're saying. So thank you. Absolutely. I'd, I'd like to comment on uh, your take on you know the cycles uh, and um, also about like how we need to expose this. Uh, I'll start with the latter. Um, you know that's the whole thing here, Alfred, is people have to talk about this openly and really have their facts right and talk about it very matter-of-factly. You know, um, a lot of people are afraid to do that. They're afraid of what their their peers will think of them, their family members, their friends, etc. And if those people don't take a stand with you against evil, they're not your friends or your true family, you know. Uh, it, it, this is part of what I see is um, People saying, I can't conceive of that or accept that that's what the world is and that's how far we've come in, into evil, you know? Well, then you're not really paying attention to reality. And you could ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Uh, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing now the consequences that we're receiving for ignoring uh, the difference between right and wrong and, and ignoring all the evil that has been allowed to go on around us unchallenged. Um, the cycles, I do believe that there are tendencies in consciousness, and it's almost as if there's an ebb and flow to um, uh, the ability of consciousness to move easily or with great difficulty. That's how I look at these cycles. It's like uh, waves uh, coming into the beach. If you're on the beach during very uh, strong, violent waves coming in, it's going to be very difficult to swim out past the breakers. Um, if the ocean is very, very, very calm and there's hardly any waves, you could do that with relative ease. That's how I see cycles. It's not that necessarily you can't accomplish things during certain cycles, but they're more difficult at certain times than at other times because of these tendencies that express um, it's like putting a bike, uh, you know, an exercise bike on setting one and riding, a, you know, 10 miles. It's not that difficult to do because there's very little resistance. You're not going to build up your legs that big doing that, though. And you're not going to build up your, your um, cardiovascular system that well doing that. But ride the bike for five miles on setting 12 and you have a whole different ball game, but it was much more difficult to do and required a lot more work. But in the end, you end up with a lot more positive result because it was harder for you to do. 
So that is how I could kind of look at the, the cycle that we are currently in and what is going on right now, that um, while it is going to be an extraordinarily difficult task, we could emerge on the other side of it much stronger and in a much more powerful and positive position if we do that work. But, you know, that's not guaranteed. I, I, you know, I don't see it as a guaranteed end result that we have to go in that direction. We could go down further and say, you know, people give up, get off the bike, and then they, you know, become uh, fat, uh, lazy, and dead. You know, it, it can go in that direction. We, we, I think, have to not reassure ourselves to the point where we say it's an assured outcome. The outcome is not assured. Evil can win. Evil can take over. And total enslavement for humanity is possible. Total destruction for humanity is possible. I almost kind of see that as being preferable to total enslavement if I had the choice. But um, because life will continue elsewhere, we're not going to escape the lesson. You could say, hey, the grand big lesson ultimately cosmically is going to be assured. We're getting the lesson no matter how long it ultimately takes. But um, the question really becomes how much suffering is going to be involved, how much suffering is going to be uh, necessary for this change in consciousness to take place. And the way I see it going, barring no significant um, alterations, is we are choosing as a species the way of maximum pain. That's what I call it, the way of maximum pain. The universe kind of gave us a choice. It's like, hey, here's the, um, you know, uh, deep resistance. That I'm going to turn on, turn you up to setting 12 here. Go. You can uh, do this and come out stronger as a result. And we said, no, nah, you know what? Not going to do it. We rather have the pain that comes with being, uh, you know, completely out of shape, sick, unhealthy, and we're going to do it that way. That's what humanity seems to have chosen as far as I'm concerned with how I see it. Um, from my perspective here, um, the community around me here in Philadelphia is amongst the most uh, degraded in consciousness. Uh, and e again, even the people who do have a little bit of the knowledge and a little bit of the information have such an extraordinarily long way to go that it is... It's, uh, it's, it's a daunting thing to even think about that back in 2002 and three and four, I was sitting where I lived then thinking it's just a matter of time. We're going to catch. to be as resistant as I had no idea that people were going to be resistant as long term there's a bigger divide and a bigger gap in knowledge that has developed from the truly conscious people um to the uh, completely unconscious. And at the rate that the information is coming and at the rate of what they all need to know, that gap seems to be widening further, not, not um, you know, closing. They're not closing the gap. The unconscious are not closing the gap to, to the knowledgeable. And that's a, that's a thing that is worrisome because, um, w again, with that knowledge differential still in place, evil is going to continue to rule because that's how they rule. They rule with, they convert a knowledge differential to a power differential. And um, the only way of um, uh, defeating their power differential is if we close that knowledge differential. And this is what it, allegorically in the Bible um in many places, it talks about the importance of knowledge. 
a lot of Christians are down on knowledge, a lot of religionists in general, and a lot, you know, they're, they're up on faith and down on knowledge. The New Age community as well uh, will uh, decry objective knowledge and say, oh, we ultimately can't really truly know anything, or ultimately, no matter how much we know, we know nothing. Untrue. Totally untrue. Knowledge is extremely important in overcoming what we are going through. Knowledge is extremely spiritual. You know, a lot of Christians will say, oh, knowledge is of the devil. No, faith is of the devil, ladies and gentlemen. Believing something without having knowledge of it and then acting upon beliefs that you can't verify is the pathway to evil. Okay? If anything, faith, having faith and blindly believing in what you're being told as being true is one of the things that leads to a totally enslaved society. And that's why they want religion so prevalent. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, really, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just about to say this, that we're, we're, uh, we're coming to the end of, 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 of this segment. Sure. Um, and uh, one of the visions that, that was given to us uh, <coughs> when we had an interaction <coughs> excuse me, an interdimensional interaction with an entity that said it was a positive artificial intelligence that came back from the year 2025 to say that Donald Trump had become U.S. president for two years and then had become world leader uh, wow. by uh, 10 years from now and then had used uh, the directed energy weapons, the transhumanist technology to be able to read the minds of everybody in the society so that he could spot enemies of the state, you know? Like, like he used that technology that they have to survey people, but actually survey their minds. And that's that's what he's going to do as president is he's going to put in technologized mind control in the U S and then become world leader and technologize it at the world level. And now, this was communicated to you by uh, 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 some sort of an entity that came into your presence. Uh, yeah, I, I can send you the, the uh, link. It, it was a, a Cambodian man who had survived Paul Pot, who was at, at uh, the, um, the temples in Cam Cambodia and suddenly began that there was this channel thing c coming down and said, we have to warn you that, that there's this entity, Donald Trump is going to run for president of the United States. And we've come back from the year 2026 to warn you that he's going to become U S president and is going to use wow. Uh, these directed energy technologies that are part of the transhumanist agenda to read everybody's minds and, and you know, designate enemies of the state and put you in FEMA camps just for what you think. Alfred, as out there as that might sound to some people because it's channeled information, uh, at this point where we're at, I wouldn't put any... Um, yeah. tasks or deeds past people who have the apparatchik of government at their disposal because the yeah. system itself is what is this evil um monstrous thing right and right and, and uh, it shouldn't I, exist for man to have the reins of it just that that's why i'm an anarchist i don't believe in having all of this quote unquote authority this illegitimate authority in the hands of flawed human beings exactly so it turns out that the u.s army i i since went and had uh interviews with experts in europe and the u.s army is testing such a technology now sure. So you have the convergence of Donald Trump and the U.S. Army. Let, let, let me tell you something. The technology that exists already, not that they will have in 50 years, but yeah. that they have now, is likenable to literal magic or sorcery. Yeah. Like that we see in Hollywood, var variations of it. This is how advanced the 
weaponry and technology that they have put into effect. And a lot of it comes from Tesla. A lot of it comes from the things right. that Tesla wanted to do for positive purposes that they've taken and weaponized. Uh, I've actually done a presentation on some of that, but the, the scalar technologies, the interferometry technologies that they have, you know, uh, the holographic technologies that they have, they would be akin to forms of magic uh, if we didn't realize that they were simply a form of a very, very advanced technology, thousands of years advanced to, to where the public is, is, is accustomed to. Yeah. Now, I must apologize here because I sort of, uh, I had, I'm, I'm scheduled to be on an, an interview with Ireland at the top of an hour. So sure. I think no worries. you we can I, have it here and then do something uh, soon yeah. and another yeah. time. I'm willing yeah. to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that this is so important because we have the convergence of Donald Trump and his statements about civil liberties and his paranoia, and this artificial intelligence that came back so uncannily, I can send you the link to that story. Sure, I would definitely like to check that out. And uh, uh, this is something that could be very serious, and his rise to power is so unprecedented that I do believe there could be a negative artificial intelligence that has been propounding his rise, pushing his rise, something beyond the human that has been propelling his rise in the Quite same interesting earlier tyrants throughout history have been propelled you know through invisible interdimensional sure uh, i just want to give you uh, we, we have about five minutes okay. uh, if, if, if you have any uh thoughts that you'd like to leave our absolutely know, I want to first say thanks for the continued work that you do to uh, interview people and uh, put out the information that you put out regarding what is going on. Um, I think that um, ultimately people have to become increasingly more aware of the dynamics that are taking place. Be honest about them, not just uh, always look at the positive or bright side of things and not be totally negative and, and you know, depressed all the time about it. I try to maintain a realist perspective and gauge what I'm actually seeing and not tell myself what I want to hear or um, look down all the time about everything. Uh, and what I see currently is depressing me, but that isn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not still able to be turned around. See, I think um, no one has ever really heard me say this can not be done. You know, I'll, I'll never make that statement because it can be done as long as we change our willpower and we adjust our thoughts and our will to do what we say we want to do, which is attain real freedom and attain a more harmonious society. That is a function of will. That can be done. The question is, will we change our consciousness and our will to the extent that is required to make that great change happen. If we do that work upon ourselves, the internal work has to come first. We can make that change happen without having to go through all the pain and suffering that it looks like we're currently choosing. It's still reversible, but knowledge is paramount. You know, biblically, again, I was saying before, in the Old Testament, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know? This is, you know, the people of goodness, or the people of God, however you want to look at it, will be destroyed if they remain ignorant. The, the, the knowledge is of goodness. You know, there is no such thing as bad or negative knowledge. It's only what we do with it. It's whether we have it or not and how we're going to use it. That's what determines whether it's good or bad, whether it's going to result in good or bad. In the New Testament, the only prescription that Christ, the, the figure of Christ, ever gave for freedom, for the attainment of freedom in the New Testament was, know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Know the truth. 
That implies it can be known. That implies it is knowledge that we are capable of taking into ourselves that will ultimately turn our situation and the human condition around. And therefore, people have to have a profound respect for knowledge and an appreciation of being able to go into it and being able to transform themselves as a result of that knowledge. That's what I have quote unquote faith in, if anything, is the transformative power of truth. And on that note, I'll just say that if anybody wants to look further into my work, I have a huge body of work on my website, whatonearthishappening.com. There's tons of videos up there. There's 196 podcasts in my existing podcast series, all free content. You could check out my gift uh, donation gift section if you like, and um, uh, you can contact me from there as well. My um, website, once again, whatonearthishappening.com. And uh, hopefully people will avail themselves of all the information that is there on that website. Alfred, once again, thank you so much for bringing me back on your show and thank you for what you do. Well, well thank you, Mark. And, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, uh, opening our minds and energizing us with this. And I look forward to our continuing communication with this new chapter that is open in such a dramatic fashion. Uh, uh, on November 8th, and I, I look forward to following this with you so we can be in touch from time to time. We'd love to have you back and have Absolutely. your comments as events develop. Thank you. Absolutely, Alfred. Thank you so much again. Great.